Hi, I'm Ross Alexander and I'm here in London with Blackpool Television and we've got a very special guest about to join us. He's come all the way over from France to be part of the 30th anniversary of Energize Records. So we've taken the opportunity to catch up with him and have a bit of a chat. So uh, let me introduce you to the one and only Mr. Matt Pop. So thank you very much for joining us today, Matt. Pleasure. I know it's been a busy visit for you with the Energize 30th uh, anniversary. So it's great that you've joined us today, and of course, it's the first time I've actually got to meet you in person. True, very true. Um, which uh, is, is is quite surreal, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so let's start with 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 giving the viewers that don't know um, of you or your or your musical history. Um, obviously, many do, um, but there'll be people out there that don't quite know who you are yet. Um, so just give us a little bit about your background and, and how you started. Right. Well, um, I've always done music uh, privately for myself, and then um, later on, I started doing bootlegs, bootleg mixes yeah. um, of you know stuff that I liked, just uh, um, the Pesh Mode, Yuzu, Abba, and I started putting those out online on YouTube, and I started to gain a bit of a following, um, and I got more and more reactions from them. Um, and then after a while, a few people uh, reached out to me. Uh, you were one of them. Uh, also, RuPaul noticed I'd done a bootleg of his, uh, of, of one of his tracks called um, "Let's Turn the Night." Yeah. He asked me if he could release it officially. So that was a big, sort of a big kickstart for me uh, to get my name out there. And then. Um, I think around that time you asked me to do a mix of, I mean, Pumping UK asked me to do a mix. Um, and I think it's all, Energize Records and Almighty Records all sort of came around 2009, 2010. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I did Abacadabra for Almighty. I did some of my first stuff with Energize for, uh, with uh, Peter Wilson. Yeah. And with Pump in UK, I did Theresa Marie, and I did uh, Lonnie, I think Lonnie Obsession, Gordon. Lonnie Gordon, yeah. and those ended up on uh, the first compilation. Uh, the first couple of pumping an anthems, yeah, pumping anthems yeah. one and two, yeah. Yeah. So, and here we are, what, 13, 14 years later, and things have just skyrocketed for you. Um, your, your client list is, 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 is growing. growing and growing and growing. <laughs> Uh, recently, you've done uh, mixes again for RuPaul. Yeah. Um, I know. I'm not sure whether they, whether the fans know this yet, but um, you've done mixes for Lamal. Um, yeah. You've also worked uh, with the Razor. True. Um, so, and Silla Black, of course. Yeah. The late Silla Black. Um, now, obviously, you've 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 got to the point where you've had two actual albums out: one with the Almighty, one with Energize, which kind of sort of. Uh, highlight what you've done up to now. Um, us, us are pumping, I've, I've, I've been delighted to be able to put together this new album, so uh, Matt Pop Essentials, which is kind of a, a history of what you've done for us, plus a lot of new bonus uh, mixes. Um, and we've noticed, we've had this conversation before, we've noticed from the sales of that, that, that America and UK uh, together generally are your biggest marketplaces. Mm. Um, followed by uh, Germany, um, and I know you're kind of quite at odds. That obviously you're you're Dutch, you're from Holland. You, you've recently moved to France. Yeah, it's it's a bit surreal for you as well that you're not that well known in your own home country. Do you think do you, is there any any reason for that? Is that just because you've been concentrating so hard on outside of your market or? No, it's not actively my choice. It's just that um, you know I take the, the 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 remix work that I you know I want to take, yeah. and for some reason it's mainly uh, UK acts and labels that have asked me so far, and also um, I think the type of music I like to do, which is sort of you know uh, pop, uh, sort of almost bubblegum sometimes, just sort of very up Euro dance uh, music, yeah. doesn't really. Um, get that much of an audience in the Netherlands generally okay so it just doesn't get picked up that way I mean it's not an active choice on my part yeah and I don't mind I mean it's we're, we're in a global age anyway so yeah, the exactly. music will find its audience wherever it is and it's uh, all the same to me as long as people enjoy it I don't care where they are and um, yeah so it's it's just the way it goes yeah yeah it's how the cookie crumbles yeah, yeah. 
But you have, you, you have over the years, I've known you and worked with you, you've become far more diverse in your, the nature of your productions. Um, in the early days, you were very PWL orientated, and as you said, you sort of moved on from doing what people like to call bootlegs or the mashups. Mm. Um, and if you listen back to some of those older mashups and bootlegs, you can still see the old Matt Pop still in there. But the way you progressed as a producer is just it's, it's out of this world, you know. And it's great yeah. to it's great to sit back and watch that, and see somebody progress and be successful with that. And there's one joy with working with you as well is is uh, sort of giving you a sort of a layout of what you want. And and I think in all the times uh, that uh, you know we've put a project your way, it, it's the tiny little tweak here, tiny little tweak there. You just seem to. Certainly with the stuff you've done for me, you know exactly what we want and it's, it's a pleasure to, to, to actually have somebody on board that, that's so in tune with what, what the label is doing or what the artist is doing or, and you're kind of in your own way as well. If I pass a project on to you, let's say for instance Zoe or Theresa Marie or it's a, a Ross Alexander project, you, you can tell with the production, within the production that you've tried to make it unique to that artist as well. Yeah. Um, <coughs> But uh, it's 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 when people I get asked obviously because you've you've produced tracks for me on three albums um, so far and you know people do say to me oh, what do you prefer this, you know the Seventh Heaven mixes or the Matt Pop and why don't you work with other people it's because you've made it so comfortable and John has as well that you want to go back to the same people mm. um, you're very much um, in touch with. The, the Ross Alexander project because obviously it's very 80s related and you're a big 80s fan. I am, yeah. So that that helps a lot, um, and that's one. Of, I think I, I get the, I, the general impression that the 80s is kind of one of your favourite genres. Yeah, I mean, I was in my 20s in the 80s, late 80s. So that music is that, that formed me. Uh, that's when I started really buying music and collecting. So there was you know early mid 80s. So that's what when we had sort of Euro disco and we had PWL. We had uh, the Italo sounds coming from Southern Europe. Uh, that's the music I was listening to. And then in the UK, you had Depeche Mode and Human League and E17 and uh, I mean, sorry, Heaven <laughs> 17. Heaven yeah. 17. <laughs> E17 were good too, but you know. So that's that's the music that formed me. Uh, and I keep you keep harking back to that a lot. Um, and those songs just they they stand the test of time. If yeah. I look at a top 40 from say 1986 now, and you you see the top 20, they're, they're all Everybody remembers is all George Michael and Prince and Cindy Lauper and yeah. Madonna and you know Queen and Abba and well maybe not Abba because they were gone by then. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Those songs have really stood the test of time. And I think I think along the stuff that we've done together, um, I haven't picked out the most obvious songs from the 80s to do. They've no. been kind of more like sort that. of yeah. electro 80s and yeah. the, dar the darker 80s as well. True. Um, and and it's worked. It's worked extremely well. But I know not many people will know this, but one of your um, your sort of sort of uh, sort of solo ambitions is to be able to find the time to actually put an actual map as an artist map pop album together True. Um, with some of your favourite you know 80s stuff uh, 80s favourites. Yeah. I'd even sing it. Yeah, if exactly. I, if I had to. You have, you have you have done some of that before, haven't I, you? I can hold a tune. I've, yeah. I've done some backing vocals for Peter Wilson and yeah. you know just and for me. And for you, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so, but we'll see. Or even an instrumental album. I could, I could do an instrumental album at one point, which uh, you know. But you enjoy doing the covers. It's, it's, you, you, you do get a lot of pleasure from doing the covers. Do you want, I do. Do you want to talk to us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, you get flack over um, doing covers. People say, "Oh, not more covers. Why don't you do original songs?" But the thing is, you know, if you're a big name artist, you know, if you are Beyonce or Adele or whoever and they bring out a new song and it's an original song, everybody will want to listen because it's them, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you're not a huge name artist, like some of the people I work for, and you do your own song, I mean, it can be the best song in the world, people will just not easily find your song. Yeah. Whereas if I say, oh, we're going to do a cover of, uh, you know, a, a Human League song, or doing a cover of Blamanche, or we're doing a cover of ABBA, people will sit, gets, uh, they sit up and take yeah, notice. Yeah, so the song yeah. itself will attract people and then, I think there's nothing wrong with doing a good cover version because uh, a cover is just a great song that has been done by somebody else before. Yeah. And many of the great songs, they've been done by so many artists over the years and nobody bets an eyelid. I mean, yeah. even the greatest hits are sometimes written for the band or they just discover a song. I mean, if you think about, you know, Tainted Love by Soft Cell yeah. or Denise Needs by Blondie or 
Keep Me Hanging On by Kim Wilde, I mean, Venus Banana Rama. You know, there's so many great cover versions that many people won't even know that they're covers yeah. because they sort of trump the original, or not trump, but, you know, they coexist happily with the original. Yeah. And that's what I always say. If people say, oh, I don't need a cover of that song, I'm like, well, the, the original will always be there. Yeah. It's not like we're trying to replace it or saying it, did, it wasn't good enough. It's just that we like the song and a good cover can make you rediscover a song you maybe you had forgotten or it can make, make you reappreciate it yeah. or see it in a different light. It can be, you know, changed and and that's what I enjoy doing for you when you said you wanted to do, uh, you know, Don't Tell Me by Blamange or mm -hmm. um, Hold Me Now by Thompson Twins, yeah. which is one of my favorite mixes for you. I think those songs, uh, you know, in, in a sort of a new, uh, you know, in a current production, it makes you re-evaluate them and, uh, you know, you just realize that how good a song they were and uh, they, they deserve a new go, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I see it from a, d a different angle where I, when I'm going out and doing live shows and a lot of these live shows, there's another generation, a younger generation there and they will come up to me, uh, you know, the school leavers and they'll go, I remember listening to the original from my mum and dad but what you've brought to it, you've given it new life, and yeah. you, you, your your mix is more current for us to play than the original. I'm not saying it's better, but it's 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 more it fits yeah, in with what's going with in today. Yeah, different audience. Or, Absolutely. Uh, so here we are in 2023, and this is your third album. Obviously not for pumping, but your third compilation of. Can I just say fourth? I'm is sorry. It fourth? I don't mean to brag, but I did two for Almighty. Oh, you did, did you? Yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. One yeah. and two. Yeah, you did. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so your fourth album, um, so it, it was kind of digging out everything and from, from our vaults and then looking um, at what was left in the vaults. So for, for me, from my point of view, going actually those vocals are still great, this could work, this hasn't been done for a long time and basically giving new life to stuff that was just sat there in the vaults and people have forgotten about from the yeah. days that I had originally released this stuff on Clone. Um, and various other record labels in the past. Um, so, f from this particular collection, what did you what did you derive as as in pleasure from w which ones did you enjoy doing the most? Well, I, I was first of all I was surprised about the number of songs I had done for Pumping. I yeah. didn't real I, I didn't realize when I saw the list that you uh, proposed. I said, oh, of course, yeah, there's that one as well. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, I mean, there's, there's always mixes that I think work really well, uh, that you're pleased with when you're done. Uh, it's like automatic on this, that I think work really well. Um, and I love the, the Mary Kiyani one, you know. Um, it's always easy when you start with a great vocal and a great song. Um, yeah. And as these had already been produced before, uh, for me as a remix, it's easy because you start with a, a good song, uh, good vocals, and it's just a matter of um, having fun with the arrangement yeah. and just try to make it, you know, pop more or, you know, in a way that I like. And um, I, I think it's a just uh, it, it's a superb collection because it's um, many songs that some are obvious choices. Some I had to actually look up on YouTube. I didn't know them. Okay. There's one or two sort of, uh, for me, a bit more obscure ones. Um, but once I heard them, I was like, oh yeah, of course, it was that one. Uh, so yeah, in that way, it, it's also for me a bit of a discovery again. So you know, I mean, I think there's only a couple of occasions I've I've come to you in the past and said, um, "What about this?" And you've gone, "Absolutely not." You yeah. know, um, yeah. and 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 sometimes it's like, "Oh, really, really?" Because I really think this could work. But then I, you know, you got to show mutual respect. And it's like if you're not in it from the start, there's no point in pushing the issue. Um, one of those songs, I think, which we did turn around. Um, your way of thinking on it was real gone kid oh, right. and it turned out to be just an, an amazing mix and you, you even said you surprised yourself um, yeah because you didn't think you could do anything with it or not not that you couldn't do anything with it but you couldn't bring anything new to it and you've turned it into a brand new song and I would never have picked it myself no no I think because I'm Dutch and I think it was maybe not as massive here uh, well it wasn't in the Netherlands as it was in the UK I, I was aware of the song but it was not a song I would have picked so it but then it just sort of tickles you like you think, okay, how would this sound as a dance mix? And then, yeah, yeah it turns out it's actually a great song to, uh, you know, for that genre. And uh, it did work out well. So. Really, really well. The same with the remix of uh, Life. It was, in fact, everything that you've, all the remixes you've done on uh, A Long Journey Home have just turned out extremely, extremely well. Um, 
But as well, it's, it's weird because obviously, I, I mean, I lived in, in Amsterdam for a year when I was much younger, so I kind of understand how things work in Holland. But again, there were many European records that were huge, which you would have taken to heart um, mm -hmm. back in the day. I remember them. But in England, it's, it's, it's vice versa, because like in England, they were like cult hits in the clubs. But over in Europe, they were massive top ten yeah. hits. I remember pitching uh, one or two to you. Uh, Dan called, Harrow. Let's do Dan Harrow, because yeah. I love uh, Don't Break My Heart by Dan Harrow, which was an Italo sort of Euro hit at yeah. the time. Uh, but that's just a personal choice for me, and of course it has to make sense on a commercial level as well. So then I have to trust your judgment. And but I remember uh, all those songs because back in the day um, I uh, had a, a friend who was signed to the same label as um, Den Harrow, oh, right. uh, which was Eddie Huntington. Okay, so I'm yeah. very, very familiar because when he used to go over to Italy to record, he used to bring back all the free promos. So I would get them and yeah. I, I would know, you know so much about Den Harrow. Um, and various other uh, other artists that were signed to Baby Records over there, so I get it. But it's just a case from a record label's point of view, you have to be very careful. Um, you know what what you're putting out there because they will attract a niche market, um, and then they're slightly more difficult to introduce into live shows over mm -hmm. here. So yeah. I've, you've had to, I've had to, from a personal point of view, box very carefully what is going to work here and what's not. Um, and you can do these as album fillers, but some of them I think deserve more. I mean, I Love My Radio was a massive surprise. Yeah. A massive surprise. Yeah. I really thought I was going to be ripped to shreds over that, but the Italio um, community really took to it. Yeah. Um, even at the launch last night, somebody came over and said, you know, I Love My Radio is ultimately one of my favorite records yeah. now. And of course, uh, one of the writers uh, reached out. He to reached say out, he, yeah. He enjoyed our version. Yeah, which, which is, is great. The best thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I had the same with uh, Heaven 17. Somebody posted my version of uh, uh, Temptation. Temptation on one of the, the guys, I can't remember which one it was, Martin from Heaven 17. Yeah. And he actually said he really liked it. He did, okay. So, so when you get that feedback, from people that were involved in the original, it's it's a nice little nod, and you think, well, do you know what? Maybe I'm maybe I'm doing the right thing here. Yeah, yeah. But I don't take anything. I'm sure you don't. Or don't take any of it seriously. Music's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be entertaining. And I always say to people as well, you know, certainly when you get your critiques, it's like you know, you've got a choice. You can you can listen to it or don't listen yeah, to of it. Course. You know, so you yes. can buy it. You don't buy it. No one's forcing you to like it. Um, and you know yourself, as somebody like me, and I've always said this about myself, I don't regard myself as a singer, um, but I, I'm very good at going in and sort of mimicking, um, you know, monotonic 80 vocals, which can be worked with to recreate that. No, but it's knowing uh, where your voice suits. Where, and yeah, you know yeah. where, uh, what songs you, you to pick, and that's important, and you sound great to me, you sound great on all those records, so you, you, you pick the right ones. But that's that's the clever thing, I mean, when you work with producers as well, is, is if they find the right song for you, which, which in the past I've had to for the likes of, say, like someone like Zoe, because she's got such a unique voice, she's got a lovely voice, but very unique, but we have to find the right songs that suit her. Um, and then you get somebody like Bianca or Lonnie Gordon or, or Mary Chiane and they can, you know, make, you know, so they could sing the telephone book and make it sound interesting. Yeah. So, but as you said, if you've got a great vocal from the beginning, it, that, that's sort of, you're halfway there. So just very quickly, I mean, it, in your process, when you're sent a project in the studio, what, what's your first setup? What would you go to first to start creating the song? <clears throat> Well, it's determining uh, determining the the, uh, the tempo and the general direction of the track. Uh, I start, of course, I usually get sent uh, just the vocals yeah. to work with. So I import the vocals. Uh, maybe if I if they need a little bit of work, you know, you need sometimes to tune and time and maybe adjust the tempo to your liking. But after that, it's just um, trying to build up the sound that you like around it. So you you, you start uh, building a beat. Um, you know, a bass line, uh, you know, lay out the chords that you want, um, which are not necessarily always exactly the chords as they were written, because sometimes you, you know, I get a little bit um, original or I try, you know. Yeah, you're known um, for that, you're known for that, yeah, very well, much. Right. Well, I think, well, if I, if I were to change this A minor to a C major here, would that how would that work? And sometimes I think, oh yeah, that gives a real lift. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But in general, I, I, tr I try to follow the, the, the song as it is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just try to enhance what, what I think needs enhancing or what's the best about the song, make that shine, stand out more, uh, make sure the chorus really pops out because, you know, the chorus in a pop song is what people uh, hook on to. And, uh, and then just work on it until I get um, 
thrills listening to it. Yeah. I, wa I want to listen back and think, yeah, I love this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's no point. I, I can't work thinking, oh, how would market A or market B respond yeah. to this type of yeah. mix? Because in the end, you have to please yourself and the, the, you know, the people you work for. And because if you if you don't put that passion in, I don't think people will. Yeah. They, they in the end you will sort of um, be caught out as just you know trying to be something that you're not. And you know I I just do what I like, and if if it's finished, I hope that I can listen back to it and love it from start to finish. And I have to say, with the music I've done uh, for you know Ross Alexander, the artist. When I listen back to those albums, there's not a moment where I think, "Ooh, I, I wish I'd done that differently." Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love listening to "Don't Tell Me" and uh, "Hold Me Now" and "Mirror Man." I mean, really, all of them. Yeah, "Living for on the Ceiling" was was "Living on the yeah, Ceiling." Yeah, yeah. That, uh, was, that was another one that I thought, "Ooh, how am I how am I going to uh, yeah, you know, approach yeah. that?" But in the end, uh, I love how it came out. When I listen back to the 12 inch of that, it's epic. You know, it's, it's fun. It's, isn't it's, it? it's, yeah. It takes you on a journey. Okay, um, good. Yeah. So. Um, but did you ever get, because when I used to produce, um, I used to always have that dilemma, I'm not sure whether you have it or not, but you, 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 you get so far and you're happy with it, but you just can't let it go, because it's something oh, yeah. not quite, did you, do, do you suffer with the same oh, thing? Oh yeah, that's, that, the, the most difficult thing is deciding when it's good enough. Yeah, when it's enough, And of yeah. course, as a producer, you tend to work for hours on end on a track, so you, you can easily spend seven, eight hours working on, you know, two minutes of music a day. Um, and then it, your judgment gets so clouded or you get so tired that you, you can't really tell anymore yeah. what, what, what you liked about it in the first place. So yeah, yeah. the important thing is to sometimes take a step back, uh, leave it for a day or two and come back with fresh ears and then you listen, you, you think either, okay, what was I thinking and scrap the whole thing or you think, oh my God, this is really good and continue. And then, yeah. So we're nearly at the end of 2023, you know, uh, so you just give us three of your, what, what, if I've said to you, what were your three highlights of 2023, what would they be? Oh, good. Well, I did a mix for a Spanish uh, electro group called Fangoria. Yeah. And um, my late best friend, who is sadly not with us anymore, um, he was my best friend for many years. He was a huge fan of Fangoria. They are an electro duo yeah. that's been going for, I mean, 30 years perhaps. The singer Alaska is a major star in all these Spanish-speaking yeah. countries. Um, so it was a real thrill to be asked by them, by uh, Warner Spain, to do a mix for them. Uh, and it was a great song as well, and it went down really well with their fans, which is important. So that was a real highlight for me. I have to say, um, Matt Pop Essentials, was, okay. uh, it really was a highlight because um, between it being proposed to me and the labels, you know, when I got the songs, the track list, and I had to do six or seven new ones. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it was quite quite a, ta a challenge yeah. uh, and to you had a, over you, the summer. You had, you had quite a workload on as well at the same time. Yeah, so, so I had to feel it pressure, in. Yeah. yeah, but then um, apparently I, 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 I really got into it. I got stuck in and um, we got it finished quite quickly. And uh, maybe we had an angel on our shoulder yeah, because certainly did. every, every uh, mix we did, uh, we decided that we both really liked them. and. It went relatively quickly, and then uh, now the finished product is here, and I'm, re I'm so proud of it. I just uh, love seeing the CD done. In, um well, in a sense, I mean, to be fair with you, I mean, when I decided to start the Ross Alexander project, the label became very, you know, self-orientated, and I, I, I only simply and purely because I was concentrating so hard on the Ross Alexander project. It was time that I, this year I wanted to go back and make the label more about everybody else as well. Yeah. And it was kind of what what would appeal to me. And it's kind of a way of, of, of a thank you to you as well doing this album, yeah. you know, just to kind of give you some appreciation as well. Um, and it's the same with the next album that's coming out, uh, which is a album which is most, well, it's all produced by Seventh Heaven. It's my way of sort of saying, look, there's something finished for you. And, and it's about keeping that relationship going, you know, when, you, when you're happy. I mean, I'm over the moon um, that I've, I've got you on board with the label and I've got Seventh Heaven on the label. Two very different production outfits, um, but the sound works so well for me. Um, and it's what I would want, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I'd been signed to another label, I would, you know, as an artist or a yeah. producer, that I would always be saying Matt Pop, Seventh Heaven, you know, there are, there are other people, but. Um, it all depends again what sort of marketplace you're going for. I mean, with the, with the 90s stuff that I'm doing, I've sort of relaunched Northern Beat, but more uh, uh, as an act. 
which is generally um, whoever the vocalist, in, which isn't me, uh, we've got Son of a Gun coming out and, you know, again, we needed a house mix, of course, uh, for that and so we went to someone that could do that mm -hmm. um, for the package. Um, but again, it's again, there's a record label and we're a very small record label where we're based in Blackpool. Um, it, it, you, the decisions we make, we have to think about, think about, think about, is it the right thing to do? Um, because obviously being a very small independent label, we, you know, we're self-funded, so every, everything is literally, you know, fine-tuned. Um, so yeah, but listen, thank you so, so much for, you know, taking time out in your schedule. So That's you, absolutely a pleasure. So you're going back to uh, France tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow, back to France, and then... Um, back in the studio? Uh, always, every day. There's always a list of things to do, uh, but you know, all the CDs, the, the, the cards for the CDs are now signed, so ready to go. Ready to go. Uh, excited for, the, for everybody to hear the music as well. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Hop. Thank you very much, Matt. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah.